how much Simtas, its students, and its dedicated teachers have impacted me. I know that I have always been a critical thinker, however, through my experience in Civitas, I have greatly sharpened my analysis, my critical, I have greatly sharpened my critical analysis skills. Instead of focusing on proposed meanings, I have learned to continually ask why on many different levels. My favorite course, philosophy, and the Socratic circles that we would engage in may have been the root of this newfound habit to always question ideas. In addition, Civitas has given me the necessary tools to solve problems that do not have obvious answers to. I have learned how to work efficiently and effectively with groups and individually. Driving me to be more ambitious, community-minded, and conscientious, this program has sculpted me in the way I perceive knowledge and the way I present myself. Walking into perspectives, the state capitol, or even the federal courthouse, Knowing that I'm representing Civitas has, gives me a feeling of belonging that is like no, none other. In this program, we do not just learn about our government. We interact and collaborate with these political figures that make choices, choices for us every day. Evident through the many opportunities that Civitas has graciously offered, students are able to experience more than the students that are not enrolled in Civitas. From our field trips to our internships, Civitas students are presented with opportunities not offered elsewhere. The way that our students conduct themselves in and out of school reflect our impeccable reputation for civic-minded young adults. I have always said that I wanted to make my environment a product of me and not be a product of my environment. I think that we are all products of our environment to one degree or another. Our parents influence us, our friends influence us, and relationships influence us. Through Civitas, I feel that I have made an impact on my environment successfully, successfully with my internship, community service, and my senior project. Freshman and sophomore year, I completed over 100 hours of community service, and by the end of my junior year, I had plans to intern for Jay Greiner, a sole practitioner in Sacramento. My mentor, Mr. Greiner, has inspired me in many ways to continue on the path of going into law. The experience that I gained from this internship had a strong impact on me due to the insight that I gained about law and how a trial and case proceed in real life. And I'm completely aware that a legal internship can make all the difference for a future law student like myself. A lot of people talk about how their internship was more than just running errands, making copies. However, my internship required me to perform basic administrative tasks in addition to legal responsibilities. As a temporary employee, I, it was expected that I would be willing to perform all tasks as assigned in order to build experience and contribute to the mission of the organization. My favorite part of this internship was researching case law, as well as the independent research that I was assigned to complete. The most memorable topic that I researched was GPS tracking devices and the limits of the government in using whatever means possible to track someone. Early this year, I followed closely the Supreme Court's decision in a case involving GPS tracking without a warrant, which was in violation of constitutional privacy rights. I was intrigued when I learned about the courts and how they confronted for the first time the government's growing use of technology and ruled strongly in favor of privacy. Following this case fed my growing urge to go into law so that one day I could be a part of a groundbreaking case like this one. My internship mentor created a learning environment for me, and I was encouraged to find out answers for myself, rather than go straight to him and ask for answers. Okay. It has always been my dream to go to Bolt Law School, become a prosecutor, and then finish my career as a defense attorney. Without Civitas, I know that this would have never been, I would have never been exposed to the real world of law. I am thankful for this opportunity because upon going into this internship, the only perspective I had was based on my experience in mock trial and what I had seen on my favorite show, Law and Order. <laughs> From freshman year to senior year, I have been truly blessed to have been a part of the Civitas family. Civitas has given me so much and it, has, it is only logical that I give something back to the, both Civitas and its supportive community. My senior project accomplishes just that. So without further ado, I would like to present to you my senior project.
a campaign on civic learning.
I think that social networking has grown to a point where it is a place where people go to find out more information about certain programs like Civitas. Facebook, newspapers, libraries, and Starbucks, grocery stores, PTA meetings, parent information nights, and middle school websites, as well as student tours, were all a part of campaigning for Civitas. Student tours went around Rio Americano, and I was able to ask for them to put in a section about Civitas so that they stopped right outside our doors and they were able to see what Civitas was like because before they didn't have a section for Civitas. The applications came from November to December, and we started interviewing in early December. I created a survey that would ask teachers, or that would ask parents that were coming into the interviews why they chose to come and why they chose to apply and how they heard about Civitas. That way I had feedback for what works the best as far as advertising Civitas. In the future, I would like to continue this project through second semester because it's not over. We have another interviewing session next semester. And I also made a guide and instruction manual for future seniors that might want to pick up this project. And I have it in the binder right here. That concludes my senior project. And I would just like to thank my teachers, Ms. Reed, Mr. Nelson, Mr. Thomas Nelson, and as well as Ms. Seibel. This program wouldn't be possible our activities wouldn't be possible without these teachers that helped create it to be the program that it is today. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. So at this time, I would like to ask if any of you guys have any questions for me. What are your career plans? Pardon me? Your career plans? As far as what I want to do when I'm older, I would definitely like to go to law school. I know once that I pass the bar, hopefully, I'll, I really want to go into criminal justice, but I know I can change my mind at any point and go into business or anything, but I mainly would like to go into criminal justice. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Do you have any thoughts on the government's use of drones? Drones? I'm not sure what drones are. Oh, like the flying overhead sort of thing. Oh, as far, oh, well, I know that our Constitution allows for a certain amount of leeway for, for the government to, to survey Americans, but I do, I'm a strong advocate in our constitutional rights because my, my mentor, James R. Greiner, he's actually one of the best lawyers as far as, you know, criminal law, or constitutional law. Uh, I've been a part of the mock trial program here at Rio, and we all, we have a pre-trial part of our mock trials, and we actually have a, an amendment, or we argue case, we argue about situations like that where it is unconstitutional. I do think that, you know, Big Brother, I know, is always watching, they say, but I do think I, it's, it's not right. Thank you. Yes. Um, how do you plan on remaining civically involved and politically involved in the future? I am, I, my, what I plan to major in is political science as well as schools that I I did apply political science as well as English, but of course I want to keep on, you know, getting experience as far as interning for different places. And as far as community service, I don't think I could ever stop community service because it's not something that I think about. Oh, hey, look, I'm 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 getting community service hours as I speak right now when I'm helping out at my church or if I'm helping out at a Civitas event like the Pancake Breakfast or internet, our um, International Relations Night Dinner. And I, I, I definitely want to keep involved in our community as well as helping out others. 
So, what was the types of resistance that you encountered from these middle school students, and how did you respond to that? Well, I know that at that age, I was shy, and I didn't want to ask these seniors that seemed to know it all questions. I felt like it, it would be silly. So, I think the main obstacle that I had when I was talking to middle schoolers was the fact that they weren't as open as I was. And I was able to, I remember my junior year, I went out to Barrett, and we did more of an interactive presentation there, and we got everyone to stand up, and we said, you know, sit down if you don't think you're going to a four-year school, four-year college. And everyone was still standing, and they all felt that, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with this person. And I, I think it's the, com the amount of comfort that they have as more, it, it builds more and more as, as we continue to talk about our presentation. And they started to become not as nervous as they were in the beginning. They started asking questions, and they were really curious about what Simtos could offer them. So that was our main obstacle, was getting them to open up. And we were able to get that away just by continuing to talk to them and get them to interact with us. And talking about your experience, because you went to art, correct? Yes. And you you knew of this program. How did you find out about Civitas? Was it? I found out about Civ. Well, my older brother went to Rio Americano, okay. so I had heard a little bit about Civitas. I got into Civitas. Like I said, my favorite show is Law and Order, so I, I was always really interested in politics. And I found out about Civitas and applied right away. And I found out. My mom also encouraged me to apply. Now, so you, have you always lived in El Dorado Hills, or did you start here and live there? I've always had a house in El Dorado mm -hmm. Hills. I didn't always live there full time. And I used to live right across the street my freshman year, but we did move up there my sophomore year. Okay. You mentioned something about Bolt Law School. Yes. That is definitely my dream. Okay. And, and another comment you made, which I thought was um, interesting, is you were saying that you wanted to practice law and you wanted to start out on the prosecuting side, but then you wanted to go to the defense. Can you explain that a little bit? I think, I mean, they always say, know your enemy. And <laughs> I think it, there's more prosecuting, there's more, there are more jobs open. And I was on Bolt's website and they actually offer more scholarships for people that dedicate three years to a pro a public service and <coughs> prosecuting jobs. And I thought that the best experience that I could get is to work as a prosecutor. And then if I were, I, I've always wanted to be a defense attorney, but I think it would be better for me to start off as a prosecutor and learn, you know, what side that you choose. I think that's a very good, a good ambition. Thank you. Have you been accepted any colleges yet or where you went to go? So far, I've been accepted to Northern Arizona University, which is rolling admissions, but I won't find out about schools that I've applied to until later. And my reach school is Occidental for water polo. I've been recruited there, so if I get in there, that would, that would be my number one school. The water polo there. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more questions? Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you.